In this video, we will cover how to conduct a virtual visit using Zoom for Healthcare. Once you have the Zoom client installed on your computer, open it up and you will come to a screen that looks like this. To get started, sign in. Here you will want to log in using the email address attached to your PHSA Zoom account. This is the email that you used when you requested your Zoom account through PHSA. I will enter my email and password and press sign in. You will be brought to a screen like this. When using the personal meeting ID workflow described in the video titled, Preparing Your Workstation for a Virtual Visit, it is important to press the new meeting button and not to use the schedule button, as this new meeting button is tied to your personal meeting ID, which allows patients to join your virtual waiting room in Zoom. To start your ongoing meeting for the day where you will be able to admit patients from the waiting room into a virtual visit, press the new meeting button. Now that I'm in a meeting, I can see who is currently in the waiting room by navigating to the toolbar at the bottom of the screen and pressing the participants button. This will bring up the participants panel. In the participants panel, you will see your own name and any patients currently in the meeting with you. Or in this case, I do not yet have a patient in this meeting with me, but I can see that Nicholas and Chris are in the waiting room. If I'm running behind and I'd like to let the patients in the waiting room know, I can do so by clicking the message button above the waiting room list. This will bring up a chat panel. I can then send a message to the waiting room. Please note that messages are only one way from the doctor out to the waiting room and the patients cannot send you messages back. Messages can only be sent to the entire waiting room and not to select individual patients. Before you begin a virtual visit with a patient, it is recommended to cross-reference with your appointment schedule and verify the patients waiting in your waiting room match the names of the patients you are expecting in your appointment schedule. Once you have verified that, you can admit a patient by pressing the admit button to the right of their name. Be careful not to press the admit all button and simply press the admit button next to the patient that you wish to start a virtual visit with. Pressing the admit button will start their virtual visit. Hi Nicholas, good to see you. Can you confirm that you can hear and see me well? Hi, yes I can. Perfect. Ensure your patient can hear and see you clearly and is comfortable with the private setting. Ensure your patient is alone and acknowledge if any family members are participating in the visit. Nicholas, I just want to clarify, you're currently in a private room and there's no one else there with you. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Great. Now that I've started my virtual visit with my patient, I can interact with the patient a number of ways using tools built into the Zoom platform. To share my screen with the patient, I can navigate to the bottom of the screen into the toolbar and click the share screen button. This will open the share screen dialog. Here I can choose what I would like to share with the patient. Whatever I choose will be visible to the patient on their screen. Select what you wanna share and press the share button. We are now sharing my screen. If I want to stop the share, I can navigate back up to the top of the screen and press the stop share button. If I want to send the patient a link or another text message, I can do so by navigating to the toolbar at the bottom of the screen and pressing the chat button. This will bring up the chat panel. Take care to note who you are sending your chat message to. In the to field, there is a drop down menu you can send it to everyone in the waiting room or in the meeting. You can also select the patient individually. I'm going to send this to everyone in the meeting. If for any reason during my visit, I need to put the patient back into the waiting room temporarily, I can do that by hovering over their name in the participant panel, clicking on the more button 
and selecting put in waiting room from the drop down menu. This will put the patient back into the waiting room temporarily, where you can then readmit them back into the meeting at any time. If my virtual visit is now complete and I want to end the visit with the patient, I can do that by hovering over their name in the participant panel, clicking on the more button and selecting remove from the drop down menu. We recommend using the remove function in the drop down menu instead of using the end meeting button at the bottom in your toolbar. The reason for this is the end meeting button will end the meeting for everyone, including yourself and any patients currently waiting in the waiting room. To avoid that, we will instead remove Nicholas by using the drop down menu next to his name. Thanks for your time today, Nicholas. I'll see you later. Now that I've removed Nicholas from the meeting, I am ready to join my next patient for their virtual visit. To admit the next patient, again, I will hover over them and press admit. For more virtual care resources or to request one-on-one -on -one consultation, please contact the Doctors Technology Office by email at dtoinfo at doctorsofbc.ca. Please let us know if you find these videos helpful or how the DTO can serve you better by clicking the link below and responding to our short survey.